Hey everybody, Thomas here. Today you got an interesting video for you. We're gonna talk about how to use a sawmill. Now it doesn't have to be as big as sawmill as mine, it can be any sawmill. How to use a sawmill to maximize your, your property's value. As you see here right now, <laughs> I'm putting in new posts because we're gonna be adding a fence to the property. Up here in Wisconsin, we are in a kind of a unique area. We, we actually have like a little hill and everything, which is really nice, the hills, house is up on a hill. Um, when we bought the property, of course, had the house, had the two-story garage and everything, had a chicken coop that's out there, and had another little structure there. And of course, you're keeping up the channel. Everywhere I go, I have to build a sawmill building. Well, I built a sawmill building. That sawmill building could also easily be converted into a barn. So I built that with the intention of, you know, whoever buys this property after us, could use that to store equipment uh, like an RV, a boat, or anything like that. It's tall enough, or they can be turned into like an animal uh, shelter, like a barn or something like that. Also, when we first had this property, we had kind of like this weird wooden fence thing here that was using old cedar uh, beams that were painted up or anything. And we had a whole lot of buckthorn in this area. And this is an unusable space. Not only was there buckthorn here, this area right here in front of me was about a foot and a half to two foot of water. It was like a cesspool and an area that just grew uh, larva, mosquito larva and stuff like that. It's absolutely horrible. Could not use this. And now from the road, you can see the house and such, but because beforehand you could not. Now we do have a row of pines over there. I'm gonna keep those there because as vehicles turn here, if their lights shine, it won't be shining up on the house and such. The cars will be on a straightaway portion here and the lights really won't affect us. At nighttime, we won't see all those lights. Also on this side here, again, same thing. It was as thick as buckthorn and, and, and underbrush just like it is across the road over there. I cleared a lot of this out. And the idea was to remove a lot of buckthorn. I have a little few pieces here, there, here and there that are still need to be removed. And I have some of these other trees that need to be removed. But the intention was to remove the less desirable trees. As you see, We've got some maples here. We've got over in the distance there, there's two popple trees. We've got some white pines, some oaks up there. But I was leaving the more desirable hardwoods and more desirable softwoods. I've also transplanted like that little pine tree there. And also on this side right here, I transplanted this pine tree. Again, opened up the area because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna maximize our property value. In our area here, there is a horse riding place just right down the road, literally within a mile of here. Everyone out in this area, really big into horses and everything. And our property here, where we have almost eight acres, is perfect for horses. However, it is not fenced. So what I'm working on right now is we're going to fence this property. And in doing so, I'm using cedar posts that I got from my neighbor down the road and everything. A uh, good guy. Some of the posts were that were too small to cut up on the sawmill. We're going to go ahead and use those as our post here. And I'm going to do this very similar to our Mississippi property. I'm going to put these cedar posts in the ground. Then we're going to run wooden boards on the outside. On the inside, on this section here, just on the entryway, I'm probably going to put um, probably some cattle panels or something like that. Uh, and then I'm going to actually use fencing, like wire stretch fencing everything. It's the Gaucho 330 foot wire rolls it's kind of for all animals and everything that's what i'm actually going to fence this property in and i'll probably do a top strand of barbed wire to go with that but again trying to maximize this property thinking about the future buyers they could be you know horse people or whatever i always recess my gate in so i'm standing at the road right now about where the tractor is is where the gate's going to be this would allow a truck and trailer to pull into the driveway. It is a bit of a choke point and everything, but you allow you to pull into the driveway and even possibly get another car in behind you so you can stop, get out, open the gate without having to worry about any cross traffic. So just a good idea thinking that out. It's worked well for us at our property in Mississippi and we also have that on our property in Tennessee. I really like an offset of a gate and everything off the road to allow you the safety to pull into your driveway without having to be out there in the actual intersection. Okay, so let's get to it. I'll put on the time lapse. We'll go ahead and put some more of these posts into the ground. Then we'll get on the mill and we're gonna start cutting some of our slats to go on the outside. Stay tuned.
right, folks, there you have it. That was 35 minutes from start to finish, digging the eight post holes by hand, as well as putting those, or actually stripping those posts, and then putting them into the ground. Now, as I was talking about earlier, this section being wet, yes, it was wet and rocky. And I think there was one or two over here that had some rocks in it, but definitely on this side here, um, water at the bottom of those holes, as well as a lot of rocks. Uh, the bark was stripped off, as you see. I kind of made that mess over there, but that's gonna be a great fire starter for the wood piles that I have to burn over here. But again, very happy way this looks. This is gonna be the, the first stage. Uh, kind of like I said, the, the opening, the choke point onto the property. From here, I'm going to diagonal it off, probably to about this section right here, yeah, about like right here or so. And I have to remove two or three of those little pine trees over there, which is fine because they're getting too close to power lines anyway. So I'll go ahead and remove those. That'll also give me room to get around here with the mower if I need to mow this front section here when I eventually get all the um, you know roots and everything out of the ground here and get it all leveled off. But yeah, this is going to look really great. I'm going to go to the store right now. we got to go get a bag of concrete. I'm going to tampen all these posts you know, just using compression of the soil and everything, with the exception of this one post up here. The post up here is actually, if you can believe this, a post that I brought back from Mississippi. There was a section of the fence that we removed due to, for whatever reason, but I had a couple of these left over. I was gonna bring more when I went back to Tennessee the other day, because that's where we stored them at, but I only brought back one, but that's a heavy duty post here, and this is the one that's actually gonna have the gate on it. And this hole I did oversized because I will concrete it, She's down into the ground about three and a half foot there, and that's going to be probably two bags of concrete on that post. I need that post to be substantial because, again, it's going to hold a, I think it's 16 foot gate. And I don't know my exact opening here. That was actually just using kind of like where the old posts were. But even if I'm a little bit short here, I can do a cheater post here, like a little T post or something like that, in order to make sure that that gate closes. But yes, very excited to get this first section done here. And again, these are all wooden posts. I'll come back and I'll put boards on the outside that we'll cut on the sawmill, and then we'll put some fencing on the backside. Everything else across the front face here will be kind of like a traditional style fence. I'll put a wooden post here with a post next to it, do a brace across it, and then stretch wire across here and put T-poles, T-post, excuse me, T-poles, T-post, whatever you want to call it along the way. And we'll do the same thing on this side over here as well. We're gonna go just to where I stopped clearing the land right here. And the intent is to fence in all the field areas that we have currently around the, um, the house here. Eventually, I can't show it here where I'm at, but uh, there's a section over there I'm clearing out buckthorn, about another one to two acre area. My intention is to make that a field at some point but that has proven to be a very slow process because the ground here holds a lot of water in that area and I'm trying not to make it all a pond. A little pond would be nice, but I really wanna just level out that area and I'm probably gonna have to get a lot of dirt to do so uh, and make that into a field eventually. And also, like I said, if this goes to a, a horse person in the future of this property, because I'm always thinking ahead and how to maximize the value off our property, my sawmill shed could easily be converted over to a barn and I can even start making some of those conversions over to that. So, yeah, very exciting. Stay tuned. We got some more coming up here in a little bit. And uh, I don't know what I'll do yet, but I'll film some more on this. It's just a great way to spend this beautiful day. It's nice and uh, cool, and the mosquitoes are not bad right now. So that's really nice. <laughs> All right, folks. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start taking out some of these trees that are here. And as we discussed earlier, these trees right here... I've got to take out probably this one, this little one behind it, and this, this bigger one here. And I've got to be very careful. I'm pretty sure I can get that down without touching that bottom line. That bottom line is the telecommunication line and the top two lines. Well, the, you know, the bottom line is the telecommunication. I guess the middle line, so your neutral, and your top line is your hot one. Don't touch that. Don't cross the two. <laughs> But if I get underneath here with the forks and get this one out, I think I can get this one out and maybe one more behind it. But anyways, the, um, what I do is I put the forks here in the tractor a little bit closer together and I spear into the ground with those forks or anything and then just use 
kind of like a prying method to uh, pop the tree out of the ground. It gets the whole root ball and everything with it. These right here are, these are red pine here. That is a white pine right there. So I'll take out a couple of these red pines here, try to transplant them elsewhere in the yard, or I'd say in the yard, in the property here and everything, and we'll see what we can do. And again, try not to hit that top line there. So I'm gonna put the camera off to the side here. I'll do a real time shot, but I gotta remove, like I said, three, maybe even four of these trees here. Then I'll get out here with the box blade, kind of level off the ground, getting any kind of roots and stuff out as I can, and clear out some of these ferns and stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Find a good place for the camera. We just had some friends stop by at the house here, and an hour later, I'm gonna continue doing this. All right. That should be pretty good there. Hopefully I'll try not to back over the camera.
Okay, so that worked pretty well. About six minutes. Actually, no, excuse me, I was talking beforehand. Just a few minutes. Sorry, I keep on hitting the damn branch. Uh, yeah, easily removed those, taproot and all. This section right here, my kids like to play in. I've got those few little white pines down there I need to move out. Plus, the power line is going to be, power company, excuse me, is going to be happy with me because now they won't have to come here and trim these trees. So, I'm going to go ahead and remove these. I'll continue to level out this section here, removing all of these uh, uh, ferns and such. And I'm going to go ahead and put on a time lapse uh, just so you can see this in action. So, again, this video is supposed to be talking about how you can use, utilize your sawmill, your tractor, and stuff to maximize your property. We're getting there. I will be cutting on the sawmill to show the boards and everything, but uh, this is really fun stuff. And as you see, again, don't be afraid to use your equipment. Very simple thing to do with the set of forks and everything. I pry in there. If you can't lift it straight up, you pry into it as far as you can, and then you pivot down using the tips of the forks to kind of prop up or pry out uh, those tree sections. Now I can go back here and replant those anywhere. This tree right here, I damaged up the tree a little bit, but I still think I can salvage uh, a good portion of that. But yeah, 50 horse tractor can do quite a bit. All right, let's get back to uh, the work at hand here and uh, do a nice time lapse and hopefully choose some uh, good music. Stay tuned. So that worked out very well. Although I had a little problem with the little white pine that's way far up there, I just could not pop that dang root out. It just there was the root system was not wide enough with the way my forks are set up, so I had to drive over it and then push it out. But as you can see, we've got nice separation between the trees, power lines, didn't touch the power lines. Yay, that's always a good thing. Got a few little sprouts that still gotta come up here, and I can actually level this ground out a lot more. But, um, yeah, opening it up, and the goal is to make it connect up here to the old corner post that they had here, trying to use that same exact line that we had. Now, behind these little shrubs right here, you can kind of see what's what was remaining there. I'll have a line that goes down that way, a nice clear shot all the way this way. Very excited to get this all cleaned out. So yeah, let's uh, come back here tomorrow afternoon probably if I don't go fishing and see if we can start getting some more uh, wire stretched here and post in the ground. Stay tuned. Well, folks, I lied. I think this will be the end of this video. I need to go ahead and get these burn piles done. So I've got the two piles going. This is all the debris that came out from the area that I cleared over there working the fence. So this will be the first of a few parts of building this fence, and then I'll come back later and then do a time lapse of the whole building process and everything. Um, we'll go back, we'll show cutting the stuff on the sawmill and everything. But again, trying to maximize the property's value. This is a horse area, so let's go ahead and give the people what they want. Horse area stuff, like fenced in properties and barns and such. All right. You've heard me jabber on enough here and everything. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you would, please give us a like and subscribe and everything. It helps the channel to grow. I learned some new stuff. My recent sawmill show, I was talking to uh, another YouTuber there. And yeah, I'm trying to figure out these algorithms. So, all right. We'll see you around. Y'all stay safe and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks, bye.